The film begins when an old man is driving a boxcar containing three mysterious time capsules, and the man is assigned to carry the cargo of the boxcars to the Beijing airport so that the time capsules can be sent to Hong Kong. But in the middle of the trip, a piece of plastic waste made by the boxcar driver got stuck in the car's engine and caused the car to lose control, causing the car to fall under a bridge. The car landed on the house and destroyed the only house owned by an old man named Grandpa Fong. Although Grandpa Fong was shocked to see the accident that destroyed his house, fortunately, he was in front of the terrace of the house, so he survived the accident. After the boxcar fell, the cargo from the boss car was thrown out, and the time capsule in the boxcar suddenly opened. When one of the time capsules was opened, a man with black armor and a frightening facial expression came out of the capsule. It turns out that the man is a warlord named Heying, who used to serve as the emperor's bodyguard during the Ming Dynasty. It turned out that Heying had been frozen in that time capsule for approximately 400 years, and now he has reawakened in the modern world, where human civilization has changed drastically from the empire of the Ming Dynasty. Grandfather Fong, who saw Heying's sudden appearance, looked scared and hid behind a car because he thought Heying was a criminal. As one of the most reliable warlords in the era of the Ming Dynasty, Heying has very strong physical strength and still masters extraordinary martial arts even though he has been asleep for 400 years. Due to the extremely cold temperature of the time capsule, he could not help but pee often. Suddenly, a male police officer assigned to guard the boxcar came under the bridge to secure the capsules. However, when the police officer realized that Heying had woken up, he left the place and reported it to his boss. Heying, who felt suspicious about the presence of the police officer, tried to chase the police car, but the police had gone too far, and he lost track of the police. That night, Heying saw the scenery around the city by climbing on a truck to the border of Hong Kong. At that moment, he looked astonished and surprised to see that the city's situation was very different from the human civilization in the Ming Dynasty. After Heying arrives in Hong Kong, he realizes that he has arrived in the future and someone has sent him to the future using a time capsule he found in the truck. Then he remembered that he had an heirloom shaped like a male genitalia named Linga, which could help him return to the past. Heying received Linga's heirloom from a monk in India in 1621, and the old monk said that Linga was the key to activating a time machine called the Golden Wheel of Time. A golden time wheel is a time machine created by someone from India and can only be used three times. It is known that the golden wheel of time has been used by an Indian time traveler twice, leaving only one last chance for someone to time travel before the time machine is destroyed. Because of that, Heying must guard the Linga heirloom very carefully and need to find the time machine so he can return to the past. But now, he still doesn't have any clues or information to find the time machine. After hibernating for hundreds of years, Heying started to feel very hungry, so he went to a noodle restaurant and ate a big bowl of noodles. When many restaurant customers waited in line at that place, he was surprised by someone wearing a horse head mask, so he hit the person because he thought that person was a monster. A drunken beauty named Sao Mai approached Heying after she saw him beat two men until they fainted. But instead of confronting Heying, Sao Mai called him a royal bodyguard, making him happy. Then Heying decided to follow Xiao Mai, who at that time was having a drinking party with her female friends at a table. In the middle of the party, Heying overhears a man saying that the Ming Dynasty's era has fallen, and those words make him very sad. Elsewhere, a young man wearing the same armor as Heying came up to a thug eating food in an alley. The man Xiao Wu had also risen from the time capsule, and he was Heying's best friend who led the royal troops in the Ming Dynasty era. Xiao Wu, who felt hungry, ate the food and drinks offered by the thugs with great gusto. But while he was eating his food greedily, several police officers suddenly came up to him and spilled the food that he was eating. Xiao Wu felt very angry and beat the policemen until all the policemen fell. However, one of the police officers who could still get up suddenly pointed a gun at Xiao Wu and intended to kill him. Luckily, Xiao Wu's best friend, Ni Hu, came on time and saved him from the bullet shot. Ni Hu was a warlord in the era of the Ming Dynasty who was close friends with Xiao Wu and Heying, and at this time, he had also resurrected from the time capsule that had fallen into Grandpa Fong's house. After Nihu disarmed the gun from the police officer, he decided to keep the gun because he was interested in weapons that he had never seen in the era of the Ming Dynasty. Nihu told Cao Wu that he would use that cool weapon to kill Heying, who had betrayed them. It turned out that, although previously, they had been close friends with Heying, at this time, they still held grudges because they thought Heying had betrayed and conspired with a group of robbers from Japan. The scene switches to Xiao Mai's house, where she accidentally sees Heying walking back and forth above her apartment, so she thinks Heying is a thief. Xiao Mai, who panicked, ran to her friend's room and told them about the mysterious man in her apartment. At the same time, her male friend, Slender, came to her place to deliver some food to her. Suddenly, Heying recognized Slender's face and thought that Slender was a thief from Japan, so he beat Slender with several punches. 
it turned out that Slender was also the same man who had previously said that the imperial era of the Ming dynasty had ended on the night of the party attended by Heying. Apparently, Slender had a face very similar to the evil man Heying had met in the Ming dynasty era, where the man was someone who had accused him of being a traitor who conspired with a Japanese thief. Due to the baseless accusations made by that evil man, Xiao Wu and Nihu misunderstood and thought Heying had betrayed them. As a result, the royal court decided to arrest Heying and remove all the honorable attributes of war from his body as a sign that his royal bodyguard had been revoked. As punishment for his betrayal, the royal executioners would execute his entire family. Hearing this, Heying, who was initially resigned to the arrest by the royal soldiers, rebelled and fought because he did not want his family to be executed. Then he broke the wooden shackles holding his hands and said he did not want to let innocent people be treated unfairly. Shortly after, Heying beat the soldiers one by one who surrounded him at that time and fled from that place to save his family. Meanwhile, Xiao Wu and Nihu, who still thought Heying was a traitor, chased him until they arrived at the top of a cliff. But in the middle of the chase, a sudden blizzard threw the three of them down a ravine and buried them all under a pile of snow. Returns to Xiao Mai's house, where Heying apologizes to Slender for misunderstanding him and hits him, causing his face to be injured. Afterward, Heying said goodbye to Xiao Mai and Slender because she did not allow him to stay at her house. As Heying was walking downtown, he decided to change into a suit he found in a car so his appearance wouldn't stand out too much. On the other hand, a police commissioner named Chong is meeting with his client, Mr. Tong, a businessman who hires security services from Chong. Chong and Mr. Tong discussed the box car that had an accident and resulted in the damaged time capsule they were about to send to someone. They learned that the three warlords from the Ming dynasty that they had frozen in the time capsule had managed to rise and escape from the capsule. Suddenly, Chong scolded Mr. Tong for hiring an incompetent driver and letting him roam around and talk to many people. He said he didn't want many people to know the secret about the time capsule and the three warlords, so he forced Master Tong to kill the driver. In the evening, when Xiao Mai was going to a nightclub, three security officers suddenly approached her and harassed her. Fortunately, Hei Ying, who happened to be there, beat up the three perverts and struck the nerves of the three men until they couldn't move. Then, a woman who was her boss came and scolded Xiao Mai because her friend had attacked her subordinates. But Xiao Mai denied it and said that Hei Ying was not her friend. However, her boss didn't care about that and asked her to pay a big compensation. Xiao Mai, who didn't have that kind of money, started to get confused and didn't know what to do to pay the compensation. Fortunately, Hei Ying kept the gold coins he got from the Ming Dynasty to help Xiao Mai compensate. Afterward, she took him to a gold shop to sell the gold coins so they could earn a lot of money. The plan was part of the money from selling gold coins owned by Heying would be handed over by Xiao Mai to her boss, while the rest of the money would be kept by Heying. When Heying was about to leave the gold shop, the gold shopkeeper said that the necklace he had had a very high selling value. However, Heying chose to keep the necklace because he already had enough money to survive. Because of getting help from Heying, Xiao Mai began to realize that he was a good man, so she decided to allow him to stay at her house. On the other hand, Xiao Wu and Nihu joined forces with a group of thugs they had previously rescued from being chased by the police. Xiao Wu then draws a sketch of Heying's face on a piece of paper and enlists the help of his fellow thugs to help locate Heying. Back to Heying, who was asking for help from Xiao Mai and Slender to find information about the state of Tao Yuan village on the internet. It turned out that the village was where Heying and his family lived during the Ming dynasty, and he wanted to find out if his family had really been executed by the royal court. However, after Heying and the others searched various sources on the internet, they still couldn't get any information identifying Heying's family and instead found false information about his betrayal in the past. The fake news made Heying feel very disappointed to the point that it made him very angry, and he threw his royal medal and cut his hair. The next day, Heying accompanied Xiao Mai to a nursing home to visit her mother, who was paralyzed and unable to speak. However, when Heying saw Xiao Mai's mother's health condition, he realized that a nerve in her body was being pinched. Then Heying suppressed some of the nerves in Xiao Mai's mother's body so that the paralysis she suffered recovered and she could speak again. Seeing her mother, who had recovered from paralysis and could talk again, Xiao Mai was very happy and thanked Heying. That night, Heying performed a strange ritual and made a vow that he would return to the Ming Dynasty era to save his family from the massacre. Then he promised that if he failed to keep his promise to save his family, he would be willing to die with millions of wounds and not get a proper burial. After saying a vow, he approached Xiao Mai and told her that he would start investigating the next day. Elsewhere in an international trade center company building, Chong invites Grandpa Fong to eat lunch. Chong's goal in meeting him is to give him a bribe so that he does not divulge all the events he witnessed on the night of the accident the other day. Soon after, Chong asks Grandpa Fong to tell him if one day Grandpa Fong sees the three warlords who have escaped from the time capsule. Grandpa Fong happily accepted the money, considering he had no other place to live. 
The next day, Heying and Xiao Mai did a meditation together, and in that meditation, Heying again remembered the words of a monk who had told fortunes about his life. The old monk said Heying would have a second life, and in that second life, he would have a longer life than his previous life. Then the monk gave Heying a natural seed and told him it would become a hint for him if it grew successfully. After getting the vision, Heying planted one of the natural seeds in Xiao Mai's house and told her about her life prediction. On the other hand, Chong and his men went to a police criminal investigation center. He ordered his men to identify the faces of three Ming Dynasty warlords roaming the city center. Chong wants to know their whereabouts so he can catch them and return them to the time capsule. Afterward, Chong went to see a Chinese history expert named Professor Wang to find out more information about the time capsule. Then he revealed that during the Ramayana era in India, someone had succeeded in creating a time machine device called the Golden Wheel of Time. However, the time machine can only be activated with a special key called Lingus Heritage, created directly by the god Shiva. At the same time, when Heying was going to Grandpa Fong's house, a surveillance camera identified his face, and the police managed to locate his whereabouts. When Heying arrived at Grandpa Fong's house to ask something, Grandpa Fong instead locked him and contacted the police. Soon after, many armed troops gathered around Grandpa Fong's house and surrounded Heying in that place. Fortunately, he managed to escape from the house after he blew up Grandpa Fong's bathroom toilet and made all the officers crushed by human feces. Seeing Heying, who managed to escape from tens of armed police troops, Chong felt very angry and disappointed in his troops. When Heying arrived at Xiao Mai's house, he found Xiao Mai crying alone in her room because her mother in the nursing home had died. The next day, he accompanied her to scatter her mother's ashes on the beach so her soul could rest peacefully. Then Heying threw his necklace into the sea and the ashes from Xiao Mai's mother's body to fulfill the promise he made the other day. He once promised to bury her body with the jade necklace. After the procession of scattering the ashes, Heying tried to comfort Xiao Mai so that she could feel better. Then he promised Xiao Mai that he would help her find her happiness. The next day, Heying went to see Mr. Tong to get more information about the time capsule and time machine. However, the surveillance cameras again identified Heying, and the police force was dispatched to arrest him. When Mr. Tong saw Heying, who suddenly appeared at his company, he panicked and ran away. However, Heying still doesn't give up and has found a way to trick the surveillance camera's identification system by changing his face with acupuncture needles. Then Heying wore a police uniform so the police would not recognize him when he entered Mr. Tong's hideout headquarters in a hotel. When Heying arrived at the destination hotel, he accidentally ran into Grandpa Fong, who had just received prize money from Chong for helping find his whereabouts. Heying, who knew about Grandpa Fong's cunning, secretly stole the money and donated the money to a charity foundation. After that, Heying entered a room where Mr. Fong was hiding and interrogated him about the time capsule he was about to send to Hong Kong. However, because Mr. Tong did not give any answer, Heying broke his legs and hands as punishment for the grand theft that he had committed in China. Unfortunately, the surveillance cameras had managed to identify Heying's face, which changed back to his real face, and the police were dispatched to the location to arrest him. But again, Heying managed to escape from the police by jumping out of the window and falling to the ground floor so that Chong could not catch him. Chong, who was very annoyed, scolded Mr. Tong, who was hiding in the cupboard then. That night, Xiao Wu went to a nightclub where Xiao Mai often came to find Heying by showing him a sketch of the face he had drawn before. When Xiao Mai's friends saw the face sketch, they felt familiar with it and said that the man in the sketch looked very much like Xiao Mai's lover. But Xiao Mai, who did not know anything about the facial sketch, denied it and said she did not know him. Unfortunately, not long after that, Heying suddenly called Xiao Mai's cell phone, and Xiao Wu realized that the person calling her was Heying. Knowing that, Xiao Wu intended to beat Xiao Mai so that she would be willing to tell Heying's whereabouts. Fortunately, just before Xiao Wu's kick landed on Xiao Mai's face, Heying, who had arrived at the scene, stopped his attack and protected Xiao Mai. After that, there was a short fight between Xiao Wu and Heying at the nightclub, causing the demonstrators to panic. But fortunately, he managed to beat Xiao Wu and rush Xiao Mai away with him. As they were trying to escape from the place, Ni Hu suddenly appeared from another direction and fired a bullet at Heying, causing him to faint. Fortunately, just before Ni Hu approached them, Xiao Mai managed to wake Heying up, and they jumped out the window to escape from the building. However, Heying fell unconscious again after they jumped off the building, so Xiao Mai had to face Ni Hu alone. Then she took a motorbike parked at the end of the road and hit Ni Hu until he fainted. Soon after, Xiao Mai took Heying to the hospital so that he could get medical treatment. But, the doctor who treated Heying was confused by his blood structure which was very different from ordinary humans. Li Hu, who was also rushed to the same hospital, showed a strange blood structure like Heying. After the police learned that Heying and Ni Hu were currently in the hospital, they rushed to the hospital to arrest them. Meanwhile, when Xiao Mai notices Xiao Wu's arrival at the hospital, she tries to get Heying out of the hospital before Xiao Wu finds him. 
Fortunately, when the police officers arrived at the hospital, they thought Haying was just an immigrant, so they instead decided to arrest Nihu, who was still unconscious. However, when the police officers were planning to take Nihu to the police station, Xiao Wu beat the police officers one by one and rescued him from that place. When Haying regained consciousness, he realized that someone had taken his Linga's heirloom, and he was sure that the police officers had taken the heirloom while he was still unconscious. Then he asked Xiao Mai to help him chase after the police using a motorbike. On the other hand, Xiao Wu and Nihu, who saw the incident, rushed after Haying using a car. When Chong's men realized that Haying was chasing them, they tried to block him by creating a traffic jam on the flyover. Fortunately, Haying still didn't run out of ideas to chase after the police car. Then he rode a horse in a truck and chased the car until finally, Haying caught up with the car and pulled the police officer out of his car. Unfortunately, Xia Wu and Nihu had also arrived at the location, and they had prepared to attack Haying using the weapons they had obtained from the car they had stolen. Soon after, the fierce fights between the three warlords could not be avoided, and Haying had to face two people at once. In the middle of their fight, Chang suddenly came by using a helicopter and shot Haying's body with an anesthetic sniper. But miraculously, the bullets didn't work on him, and Haying quickly threw it at Nihu's neck until he fainted. After Nihu passed out, Haying realized that a car was about to hit Nihu's body, so he rushed to save him. However, after he managed to save Nihu, a series of collisions occurred again, and a large car suddenly hit his body, causing Haying to fall into the river. Xiao Wu, who knew Haying had saved Nihu, began to realize that Haying was not a traitor, so he jumped into the river to save Haying. At night, the police started to search the river to find Haying and Xiao Wu's bodies, but still failed to find them. A few days later, Chang came to Stanley's prison to release Nihu because it turned out that Chang was Yuan Long, who had been Nihu's senior during the Ming Dynasty and was his oldest friend. At that time, Yuan Long thought that Haying had conspired with the Japanese, resulting in his wife being killed, and since then, he has held grudges against Haying. Although Haying denied the accusations and said he was not a traitor, Yuan Long still did not believe him. The next day, Xiao Mai was still waiting for Haying to arrive by the river and hoped that he could return with her. Three months later, it was finally revealed that Haying was still alive, and at this time, he had made peace with the other three royal commanders. The warlords finally found the time machine they had been looking for and could return to the past when the Ming Dynasty was still victorious. The film ends.